has been a hell of a journey. But everything ends someday. The discovery is my home, my family. We've always been able to find answers together. Being a part of a crew, being where you need to be, when you need to be, that's Starfleet. Last dance. I shall follow your lead. Hi, oh my goodness. It's so nice to meet you and talk with you. It's so nice to see you. Uh, I missed you on the last uh, uh, set of interviews that we did for uh, Star Trek. Gotcha. Discovery, but gotcha. I'm glad I've got you for this, the final season. No, that's right. So much to really talk about in a few minutes. But um, yeah. uh, my first question is, are, obviously, you're going to miss Michael. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Are, do you take a piece of her where uh, when you leave? You know, I think so. I think when you're doing it right, you do. I think when you're approaching the art in the right way, and I think I can speak for all of us when I say this, I think that all of us are gonna take some pieces of these people. Um, they, it's not just, it's not what you bring, um, it's not solely what you bring to this character, it's not solely what you imagine or what you bring to life, but it's also the life that these characters put back into you. And if you allow it, if you engage with it, then you can expand and grow and learn and change right along with the character because of the character. So. I will miss Captain Michael Burnham, and I have learned a great deal about being a woman, a leader, a black woman, a mother, a wife. I've learned so much from being this character. I'm so grateful. And and her character resonates, I mean, uh, all the way from the, you know, 22nd or 23rd century to, to our time back, back in the past, yes. because she is quite a, uh, uh, my gosh, what a force she is. Oh, thank you very much for saying that. And I, you know, it was this, we, we, we found this synergy, right? Uh, with, with all of us, with the, the writers and the, and the cast and, and the crew as well. But, you know, we, we developed and created these characters together and, um, none of it happened in a vacuum. You know, I've said that a lot lately. We all did it together. We poured into each other. We dug the gold out of each other, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. Do you enjoy going to the conventions and meeting fans? Oh, it's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite things because it's not something that is guaranteed to you, right? It's not promised to you in this industry. You don't usually get to do that. But because this is the sci-fi genre and because this is Trek especially, we have this entire world available to us where we get to connect with people, where you get to see why you're really doing it and the yeah. impact it's really making. It's one of my favorite parts. It is a gift. I thank, I thank God for it all the time. And that will continue. And uh, would you think the... Uh the Michael character will appear every so often in other treks. Man, I I hope so. You know, we 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 went beyond any any trek uh, where any trek has gone before, right? We went to thirty one eighty eight. Um, but I, I do think that Starfleet Academy is set in the same timeline, so there's all these opportunities, right? I think the door is open. I think every single one of us would be would be down to come back. It'd be great. In our final moments, what do you think audiences are going to take away from the final season of Star Trek Discovery? Oh my goodness, well I think they're going to just, I think it's going to be a really full experience for them. I think they're going to feel everything. It's going to be a roller coaster of emotions for them. But what we hope, what we hope is that it makes them proud. We hope that it brings them peace. We hope that it challenges them in the best ways and makes them a little happy too. Uh, thank you for your time. You are such a brilliant actress, and I want to see you do a lot more. So uh, God bless you, and, and have a great day. Oh, thank you for that blessing. I'd say the same to you, and thank you for that compliment, too. Good to talk to you. Activate suit magnetization. Captain. Captain, are you all right? Surprisingly, I'm not dead yet. Focus on our team. I'll try to take out their engines. Gosh, there you are. Uh, <laughs> Good morning, Tony. Good morning, David. Uh, first of all, I'm really excited to chat with you. I'm a big fan of Star Trek. Have been since I was a kid. Um, and uh, I'll start with David. Uh, man, I mean, 
what what a character you've got i mean a, a lot of times actors don't get a chance to bite into something like this it's, it's a gift truly thank you um it all started from a phone call michelle paradise and alex kurtzman reaching out to my team saying that they had this idea for this character and at the time they only had like four pages written and i, I remember they sent it to me i had a read of it and i thought there's something in here which could be fun and that is different um, and then I had no idea what I was kind of letting myself into because I don't like to know, similar to Doug, I don't like to know too much. I'm minimal. Give me bit by bit by bit. And then just seeing how this character has just been fleshed out and how they've given me so much to work with so early on has been a true, true gift. I'll forever be grateful. Uh, Doug, Saru has gone through so much. Uh, and in this final season, what are, what are audiences going to expect uh, to see? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, right. Saru has gone through so much. Uh, changes in title and rank and, and now the addition of a love life uh, that, that has been very, very dignified and very, it's like, it's like a frock drama courtship the two that <laughs> Saru and Tarina have together. So I think, uh, I, I hope that the audience is, is anticipating the same thing that I was going into season five, and that is, will Saru and Tarina continue their love story? And uh, uh, one of our showrunners, Michelle Pirate Paradise, said, I think you'll be very happy with the Saru Tarina story. How oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, is the makeup getting easier? I mean, we're in the final season, but has the makeup gotten easier for you? You know, when you're gluing something onto someone's face, it is what it is, and <laughs> it can only get so good, <laughs> you know, so fast. Uh, but it, it's honestly, it looks like it took, takes uh, a long time. Uh, but most of the most of the prosthetic work is sculpted and painted ahead of time. Those pieces then are glued onto me as the last step, and that's only two hours a day. That's not that bad when it comes to a, a creature. That's great. You know, we only have a few seconds left, uh, David. What do you think audiences are going to discover about Discovery in this final season? Um, how much, how special it is to explore, and how special it is to explore when you're surrounded by a team who are like-minded, who are driven, and who are inspired. Um, we're going to see a lot of adventure, a lot of fun, love, and heart. Mm -hmm. That's what Star Trek is all about. Doug, we got to talk for a little longer. Uh, I'm good friends with uh, Craig Lemons. Oh, I love and, Craig, yes. Yeah, and he told me to mention that you were the mascot at Ball University. At Ball State University, I was Charlie Cardinal in a big bird suit. Together for a longer interview. <laughs> we'll do that, we'll do that, okay. Right. <laughs> Bye, Doug. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. absence of light it is more uncontrollable and sinister you were there waiting because the darkness is not dark to you at least not always The coming darkness was too deep for us to grasp. It is absolutely my honor to uh, to sit and chat with uh, uh, with both of you, uh, incredible actors, um, you. and not just for the chosen. I mean, the things that you've chosen and done over your careers are just amazing. Um, my first question is to Jonathan. I mean, when you first got this role, was it was there a heavy responsibility to to kind of get it right? You know, I, I think very initially, um, I was just grateful to have a job. And then as we started getting into it, probably about mid-season, mid middle of the first season, uh, it, it really started to dawn on me what it was that I was endeavoring to do, uh, especially when there were scenes where I had to actually start preaching from scripture. And there was a moment in season one where I, I kind of panicked on set and I just had to pull Dallas aside and 
and explained to him that I didn't I didn't feel worthy of what I was the words I was saying on the page and, and he kind of put me at ease he's like look man not, none of us are worthy to be <laughs> doing this but here we are telling the story so uh, and that gave me a lot of comfort and 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 then I remembered like well, well God put me here you know he, he put me in this role he gave me many opportunities to play Jesus in these small little projects ahead of the chosen and so that became this kind of preparation for Jesus and the Chosen for me. So once I, I have remembered that, um, it's been much easier ever since. Uh, Elizabeth, I'm going to get to you in a second, but I have a follow-up question for yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Is, is, you know, George Reeves, who played Superman, had a problem with, you know, being so identified with that character that he, yeah. you know, he felt he couldn't get any other roles. Yeah. It, it, does that cross your mind? No, no, because I, you know, I, I gave up my concept of, of having control over my career uh, years ago. And, uh, you know, again, I have to just say, like, I, I believe that God put me here and, and I now have a career as a result of, of this show. I mean, I had a career prior, but it really didn't get to the level where I'm at now until this show. And so, you know, I, I put everything in his hands. And if, if he wants me to do other things between seasons after the show is over, great. And if not, then great. It's, I try to just every day surrender my will to his. And, uh, and it usually turns out better than I ever could have planned. Well, that's lovely. And Elizabeth, my gosh, Mary Magdalene is such a strong woman. I mean, wow. I, I, you know, and... <laughs> We, we don't get that from, you know, uh, Bible study and all of that, but, but you have given her such a, um, a deep and well-rounded um, uh, version. A lot of that is the writing. <laughs> I, I, I feel grateful that I get to play this character because she's already written that way. But she's strong, not of her own doing, you know, when we first meet her, she is um, she's really struggling with um, some, some very painful things and uh, she's trying to do it alone and she, and she doesn't know how. And so her meeting with Jesus and, and being transformed by him um, is the thing that, that creates this strength in her, that, that, um, that sort of reinforces a sense of belonging to the group, to this community, to uh, her ability to reach out to others and her compassion. And so, um, yeah, I mean, she, she becomes a very strong character, uh, but, but she starts off in a, in a very vulnerable state. And um, I think that's this testament to, you know, to this, all of these stories of how Jesus com completely transforms people. And I think what's, what's really um, lovingly done is the fact that uh, Jesus and the apostles are family, and and mm. you know the, the the writers allow your character Jonathan to have uh, you know humor and to mm. and to laugh and you know swim and and do the things that uh, I think people don't really realize that you know um, probably happened. Yeah, I th I think people tend to forget that you know he Jesus was born a human being. You know uh, he was. As Christians, we believe he was uh, fully human and fully divine, and, and you know, and and that sort of hypostatic union of of those two two elements um, create for a lot of mystery, create for the need for faith. Mm. But uh, we can't deny his humanity. And what is humanity? Well, it's the fullness of the expressions of humanity, emotions of humanity, experiences of humanity. So. Um, I, I think that's what, what really draws people to Jesus is knowing that he did everything and experienced everything that we do as humans without sin, of course. Um, but, you know, it's hard to go through life without ever laughing or without mm -hmm. ever swimming or, without, you know, obviously certain uh, circumstances are the exceptions. But um, for most people, it's just it's everyday life. And we just have been able to show it through the gift of time and telling this story. Elizabeth, are you just blown away by the amount of fans uh, that yeah. the Chosen has developed over the four over the three seasons as we enter into season four? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, we started as a you know four episode web series. It was crowdfunded in the middle, filming in the middle of Texas, and 
Um, because it was on an app, there was it was really hard to gauge what the fan base really was, how big it was, how enthusiastic they were. Um, and as the project has been growing and as, you know, and then we have COVID, so we don't really get to have interactions with, with people in, in, in life. <laughs> and so um, everything was virtual for so long that at the last two years, especially at the, our screenings and our events and fan interactions, it, it has suddenly dawned on me of like, this is, this is uh, really reaching a lot of people and they're, they're so enthusiastic about it. And it's, it's incredible. The Men of Sorrows, acquainted with grief. Danny! Tony, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I, uh, Salt Lake City. Tony, this is the most excited Danny's been all I'm day. I'm so happy to see you, Tom. Uh, they're saving the best for last, uh, the hard questions. Chris, congratulations on on on, on your first directorial, uh, you know, moment. Uh, was it fun calling the shots? <laughs> it was. There's a fly. It's going to drive me absolutely nuts. What, in this room? Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey. I think oh, what are we going to do? I think it's because of the guy that just oh, came in gosh, the door. Uh-oh. Did you get him? Wait a minute. Who just walked in? Because they walked in and a fly came in. There, you got him? Okay. Whoa. I, I heard it die. Okay. We just, we just Someone is... Oh, He's got a brother. All right, let's get back there. <laughs> Oddly let's enough, that fly, the fly, its man is open. <laughs> its man is open, indeed. But Sorry. Uncle. Uh, I knew you were going to do something I, like that. Thank you, Danny. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do. Uh, you know, people were warning me that it was going to be really hard, and I actually found strangely that it was uh, easy in so far as uh, moving in front and behind the camera. I really, I really enjoyed it. It was great fun. Well, when you have a, a cast like you do, I think it, I think that falls into place really, really quickly. But your crew is amazing. My crew was incredible. I mean, from the first person that signed up was Peter Devlin, who's won an Oscar for sound mixing. I had Cindy Evans, Aaron McGill uh, on uh, production design. I had Matt Jensen shooting it, who I've worked with for nearly 10 years on the Wonder Woman's and I Am the Night. Um, I really, I just, it was a, an embarrassment of riches. And, and Danny, coming into this, was it, was it an immediate yes? Did you have to yes. audition? I don't think no, you auditioned. No, I, I read the I read the audition. Did you say audition? Yeah. Are you, are you, I don't think you auditioned for you anything. You got all your marbles? <laughs> uh, no, here's the thing. He sent me the script. I read it. I loved it. I, I immediately si signed on. as a, uh, I said, look, you're going to get this movie made because it comes from the heart and it comes from that twisted little mind of yours. And it's really going to be fun and stylish. It's about LA. It's great. I, I had a great part, uh, Jack. And I get to work with Annette Benning. Ah, and on. you get to write your own monologue. And I could do anything I want because, you know, this guy is like, well, he's a good director. He's a good director. But he tells you what to do. He really shepherded it uh, along. Well, I think, I think that's natural with your first project, too, is to make sure that, you know, you're 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 do, you're overdoing it maybe yeah i mean i really it was more about who i wanted i i reached out to peter devlin because i've known him since i was 27 he did the star treks cindy was a friend of uh, my producers aaron who is our production designer i i found her from a film that i absolutely loved um i knew annette through warren i knew danny from growing up jennifer i didn't know dewanda i didn't know john ortiz i'd seen and loved um so there was a reasoning behind everything, for sure. Danny, what do you think people are going to take away from watching the film? Well, they're good. I'm telling you, they're going to be really entertained in, in the fact that it's a unique movie. You don't see a movie like this every day. This is like, you know, a little bit off the charts, you know, <laughs> so you got to really, you're in there. They're going to they're gonna have a good time. They're going to understand this guy a lot because Chris is all, it's all about finding yourself this movie you start one way and this is a lesson that they can all something that they can take away is that when you go after something wholeheartedly you never know what's right around the corner 
Exactly. Mm. And that's what happens in this movie. And and when you peel that onion back, what he finds is himself. I don't want to give it all away. No, don't. Chris, you have the last word in our in our conversation. Uh, this is a film that I absolutely love making. It uh, comes from the heart. It's about a, a true innocent, uh, a guy that believes in uh, in what he wants and is unjaded. There's an earnestness to this film that uh, I don't think many films have nowadays. There's no wink, wink, or nod, nod, or any of that. It's uh, it's about a, a boy man who's a pool man whose best friends are an elderly couple whose girlfriend uh, is a former actress who uh, is in love with him, but he's not quite sure how to reciprocate. It's really about people being in relationship and out of relationship, uh, come for the story, stay for the characters. The wavelength is called Pool Man. Thanks for joining us for Screen Chatter. If you'd like to follow us online, visit us at ScreenChatter.com. You can check out our many interviews, and you could also check out my reviews. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Toscano, and we'll see you next week right here for another Screen Chatter. <laughs>